Welcome to Cinema Wellman. I'm your host, David. And tonight we're stealing directly from our dear friends at Spotify and presenting uh, Cinema Wellman's 2023 Unspooled. Uh, as a self-proclaimed stats geek, it should come as no surprise that I keep stats on my movie viewing. The fact that I maintain a database of every movie I've ever seen kind of cements that stat geek status. Not a math guy, just a stats guy. Uh, so today on the final day of 2023, I will share some of our viewing statistics for the year. And now that I think of it, I may be the only person interested in anything that follows. But here I sit on New Year's Eve, amateur night. Anyway, so <laughs> here we go. We screened a total of 794 movies in 2023, which is the fourth highest yearly total all time. The record of 1,000 set in 2020 will never be broken, not on purpose at least. The all-time total is now at 8,778, 8778 palindrome, putting us 1,222 from the goal of 10,000 different movies screened. Those 794 movies added up to 70,723 minutes or 1,178 hours or 49 days of movie watching, which is admittedly a lot of time, but I enjoyed a vast majority of it. The oldest movie screened was George Melies' Four Troublesome Heads from 1898. The newest was a tie since I saw 74 movies that were made in 2023, making those the newest. The average year for the 794 movies was 1982.9, or there you go, 1983, which proves I continue to watch older movies that I want or need to see. The shortest movie I watched this year was David Lynch's Premonition Following an Evil Deed, whose title takes almost as long to read as its one-minute runtime. The longest movie this year was Abel Gantz's magnificent 1927 film Napoleon, which was one of this year's highlights. The average length of this year's movies was 89 minutes, which suits me just fine. 2023 saw the checking of two rather large movie boxes here at Cinema Wellman. I saw seven uh, the remaining seven must-see movies, which means I have now seen all of the movies included in my must-see movie book. I also saw 15 cult movies, which means I have now seen all of the cult movies in my four cult movies books. Parts of that list were difficult, but I made it. The 794 movies were nominated for a total of 549 Academy Awards, winning 51 Oscars. Not all deserved, I may add. As far as our official Cinema Wellman ranking system, we give it the thumbs up, the nothing, or the meh, and the bomb. As far as that goes, 231, or 29%, were given a thumbs up. 98 films, or 12%, got the bomb, and 466, 59%, were given the blank space, which means it was okay. Not a waste of my time, but not something I'd suggest that you all watch. That's not a bad pie chart there. I'll take that on a consistent basis. The 794 movies came in a variety of ratings, 12 to be exact, there aren't 12 ratings anymore, but some of them don't exist today, as you know. 48 different countries were represented this year, as were 613 different directors. Directors who popped up five times this year included Alan Duan, William Bodine, I keep seeing those Bowery Boys movies, and Robert Siodmak. The Six Timers Club for 2023 included Leah Shore, Cecil B. DeMille, and good friend Wes Anderson. Cinema Women's Director of the Year, if there was such a thing, would go to George Melies. I enjoyed eight of George's films this year, and they were delightful. And the eight probably added up to a total of 
uh, an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> Short and wonderful. Genres are always an interesting category to look at, especially when you consider that many movies blur several genres simultaneously. The final tally for 2023 was 17 genres, with way too many subgenres for even me to be concerned with. And I've gotten pretty creative with what I'm adding into the database as far as I'm, I'm just adding, you know, two or three that might not fit, but if you see the film, you'll get it. If you're going to screen over two movies a day for an entire calendar year, you're going to utilize a lot of platforms to get the job done. In 2023, we got our movies from 24 different sources, a vast majority of which were legal and above board. The top five for 2023 were HBO, Max, whatever they want to call themselves, 51 films. Number four is Criterion. Our friend, we love Criterion. 77 films from Criterion this year. We also love TCM. 98 films from TCM. We're kind of okay with Netflix. 103 from Netflix. And number one this year, thanks to Quinn for making this possible, was uh, Plex. Uh, 272 films that I uh, screened using the Plex platform. Something else that I keep track of is cost per rental when it comes to Netflix, and I certainly get my money's worth when it comes to them. In the old DVD <laughs> DVD days, I must have been in some kind of file of theirs under rental surveillance, as it were. This year's Netflix bill was $1.80 per rental. So, you can't beat that. <laughs> And that's a wrap for this unspooled episode, our 49th and final episode of 2023. Thank you so much to all my friends and family that make up 99% of my audience. It's fun knowing that there are people out there that are willing to spend 20 minutes or so uh, of their week here with us every week at Cinema Wellman. Thanks always to Quinn and our tech department who keeps things running and puts out any and all fires. Uh, Andy in our musical department is always cooking up fun things for us. Chet, <laughs> in our, our sound man who makes us sound like a real podcast on a weekly basis. And I'd also like to welcome Dakota to the staff for season three. Dakota will head our wardrobe department and has come up with some interesting designs for our signature episodes. We are looking forward to debuting a few of those very soon. We will be back at our regular Friday launch time uh, next week for episode one of season three of Cinema Wellman, which will be the best and worst of December. We hope you'll join us for that, and we also hope that you have a very happy and healthy and safe 2024. Until we see you next week, take care.